Hi, welcome to a special edition of Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Jay Handelman, theater critic at the Herald Tribune. I'm joined by Carrie Seidman, arts writer and dance critic. And we're here actually this week, instead of telling you about all the wonderful things going on in town, we're, we're going to tell you one of the things that's not going to be in town anymore, and that's <laughs> <laughs> our boss, Hello. Susan Reif, the arts and books editor, who is taking her leave on Friday. We think she's taking the leave of her senses, but maybe she's the, the smart one. But uh, she is uh, leaving us, retiring, and where are you going? I am returning to my home in California, uh, where there are mountains significantly absent from the landscape here so you got the ring wing bridge yeah i know the, i know about the bridge <laughs> so you susan has been here for 17 years yeah. and has had many different jobs and job titles during that time and mm. i was here when she came in in 1999 yes. i guess it would be if my math has always been terrible as features editor and so has been my boss off and on for a lot of that yeah, time in different capacities yeah, yeah. but um your main focus, or I'd say for a lot of the time you were here, has been books. Yes. It's been a real passion. So t yeah. talk a little bit about what that's like and what the book scene is here in Sarasota. Well, how that really got started was when the Reading Festival was really a big part mm. of the landscape here culturally. Mm. And I came as features editor, and at the time, the Herald, the Herald Tribune did a big tab section for the festival every year. and. Um, because that was something that interested me and something that the Herald Tribune was a sponsor of as well. I wound up editing that whole section and working with the Reading Festival people, interviewing dozens of authors every year. It was, it was a festival both wonderful and horrible in the sense that it, there was so much going on and there's, that just creates so much work, right. which is not a bad thing. It's great to have stuff to do. So what's, what, what have been some of the highlights of your career here? Well, the Reading Festival, obviously, for those years that that was going on. But since I moved over into kind of a broader arts editor position, I've also maintained my role as a reporter. And uh, so I was covering um, what was happening at the Ringling Museum of Art, which, when I came here, had uh, a leaky roof, and the Catazon was closed, and Mabel's Rose Garden was an overgrown weed patch. And in this, that 17-year period, it's been completely restored, new buildings added onto the grounds, uh, the grounds beautifully restored, and that's just been really exciting to see something go from kind of a, almost a derelict institution into really one of the, the jewels of the arts scene here. I've also been able to cover the changes in personnel as the uh, Sarasota Orchestra, uh, went through their transition from Leif Bialin to Anu Tali, and that's been very exciting. Leif did fantastic work with that orchestra and had really built it into something, and now Anu has really taken that organization several steps beyond. So that's been really fun. And the other biggest thing really has been the uh, Sarasota Museum of Art uh, and its long journey from, uh, you know, not quite there to its full funding with its long capital drive and now uh, you know they seem to be in the process of taking a very long time again to turn that Sarasota High School building um, of architectural significance into a new uh, contemporary museum space and, and study space so that's still to come so I'm sorry to kind of leave before that project was done and then the other thing of course is the Ringling International Arts Festival which didn't exist until what are we on year Seven or eight. Seven or eight going on. And that's a really exciting festival. Um, with, that's, that's one of the things that I really seriously would come back to town for because I just think the programming is interesting. And where can you get that, you know, over a four-day period? You can't get that without going to New York City. And it's a lot less expensive to come here for a weekend than going to New York. So you kind of sprung the news on us. I mean, I think we were, both Carrie and I were a little yeah. stunned. I'm not surprised that you were going to retire because that was sort of a given eventually we thought in a couple of years yeah. the yeah, timing was, the timing was, um, a was this something you really gave a, a lot of thought to? I mean obviously you thought about it but you planned this a long time very quietly you didn't say <laughs> a word never never a hint that you were well I don't ever think you want to really tip your hand about that big a thing because you wind up being kind of a lame duck for far too long if you start 
trumpeting around the town that you plan to retire at X point and it's two years down the road or whatever. Were you planning to, to nominate a Supreme Court justice or something? Or? Yeah, <laughs> I, maybe I should try that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's obviously been on the, on the radar for a while. You don't decide to retire unless you're just fed up, right. which I'm not. Um, but, you know, it's been on the radar for a while. Uh, the other night, the Arts and Cultural Alliance of Sarasota County had a reception here in the lobby, and uh, a few of us had some things to say, so we're going to let you take a look at that for now. Susan, you deserve everything that is coming your way, a chance to move back to the real West Coast, a chance to spend time with your mom, a chance to explore the many passions that you have. And the only thing I will miss, though, Whenever you've come back from one of your vacations, there's always something that goes wrong with your camper. I will miss those stories because you and Steve are the only ones I know that would drive all the way back to Texas to retrieve a camper just to make sure you can go camping again. So thank you so much for everything you've done. She can knit a hedgehog. She can play the ukulele. She knows how to tie scarves so they don't look like it's a guillotine, which happens when I try to do it. She can run far longer than I can run without whining. Um, but mostly I admire her because she's really a very good-hearted, generous person. And I've constantly learned something new from Susan. Uh, Justin, how to deal with all sorts of problems, all sorts of personalities, She's a really good editor, very supportive, and a wonderful colleague. And I, I, I can't believe that, you know, 10 years ago I wouldn't have said I would be emotional right now because, like, sometimes I wanted to kill Susan. Um, <laughs> and there are moments that I want to kill Susan now for retiring so, so quickly, but uh, I'm really going to miss you more than I can really explain now because I will get emotional. Uh, and I wish you all the best. Uh, it has been a great ride of... Uh, being able to cover great stories with the fantastic people that are here in this arts community. And, uh, and I will miss all of you greatly. Thank you very much for coming out. It's just been really, really great. Thanks. I think I miss you guys, both of you. Um, I, I think we have a great bunch of talent among our small little pod. You know, I think the two of you are the hardest working people in the newsroom. Maybe the three of us are the hardest working people in the newsroom, but just, you know, there should be Pulitzer Prizes for just sheer grit on getting stuff done. Yeah. And, uh, and that's what both of you do, you know, a giant pile of work, always, always, always. And now, I'm sorry, I'm leaving to leave you with a giant pile of work to well, do you, as well. You've left us with some inspiration. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, one, there are many things we can say, and some of which we said at, at the reception the other night, but. I am amazed that even after you announced that you were retiring, you have been working your butt off in the last <laughs> few weeks. I mean, even as soon as we finished yeah. recording this, Susan's back to work to finish yeah, a, that's a story right. or two. Yeah, for being a lame duck. Yeah, uh, full not throttle leaving us, right to the end. Not leaving us totally empty-handed. And yeah. But as Carrie said, you've been a, a great friend and a great editor, and it's, you've just, you're a great listener because we both unload. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you're quiet. You don't say much. <laughs> We don't, obviously no we need to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> but uh, it is gonna, there is going to be a void there, even if we compress our desks. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really going to be kind of weird uh, come next week when you're not here. And uh, I'll be we'll watching you guys from afar. I'll watch Spotlight every week, okay. see what y'all are up to. We'll look forward to that. And we'll be back with uh, a more normal Spotlight on the Arts uh, next week. And we're going to leave you with a little musical salute from Howl and Bob, who... Uh, played a little tribute to Susan at the Arts Alliance uh, reception. So, so long, Susan.